Hello everybody and welcome back to Typical City. This is your latest Manchester City news and transfer news as City have pulled out of the Declan Rice deal. That's according to the Daily Mail and that is a result of Arsenal's third bid for Declan Rice of over £105 million but spread over four years which is rumoured to have been rejected by West Ham as well which only leaves West Ham and Arsenal to agree a deal and Declan Rice has only one destination available to him now and in other news United blow City out of the water but not in the way that United fans would probably want to blow us out of the water, but that is later in the video. But now Declan Rice, I'm gutted. I am genuinely gutted because I know there are some blues out there that want someone else. They don't see Declan Rice as worth it. There's plenty of other names that have been rumoured. Uh, Lavia bringing him back. What a great signing that would be. James McAtee, Valverde, uh, Joshua Kimmich. I don't think we'd ever go in for Joshua Kimmich and Valverde is rumoured to be available for 90 million, but... Liverpool are in there, so we could end up with a new war that we don't want to get involved in with Liverpool. And war it seems to be the bidding war seems to be the war. Huh, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Well, it would have been good for West Ham if we entered into another bid, but now they're just stuck with arguing the, the, the figure for Declan Rice between them and Arsenal, and that is it. Eni Aluko, a few days ago on TalkSport, Eni Aluko, the former England international women's football player, suggested that City and Pep, Pep himself, is doing Mikel Arteta a favour by putting in these bids uh, to, just to bend the arm behind the back of the Arsenal owners so Arsenal owners feel the pressure so they go and get Declan Rice for Mikel Arteta because that makes perfect sense. What a non-story from Enia Luka. The most ludicrous and nonsensical approach to transfers I've ever heard because as if City don't have better things to be doing right now than spending a couple of days with Cheeky Bergenstein and Kaldun Mubarak sitting down, let's compile a big pile of documentation to put in a bid for a player we don't actually want. We just really want Arsenal to get their man. This is a person... Reporting on talk sport, I mean, the credibility after saying such a stupid thing is got to be dead in the water. How can you say such a thing? This is not a playground where you're sending WhatsApp messages to each other and, oh, how much for your, do you want for your Vimto lolly? Oh, 25p? No, no, I'll give you 50p and that, that will call it even. No, it's not like that. This takes days. This is a serious business prospects we're talking about. We're not talking about minute details like that that we don't do favours for one another this is war when we're going in we're not going to help Arsenal so that was nonsensical the fact that City have pulled out is more in my opinion to do with City's image and how much they're fighting to eradicate the image that we have right now of the ruiners of football and how we um, we spend what we want, we buy who we want, we throw money around all over the place and if we want to spend however much money we want, we'll break the rules, the financial fair play rules in the process. That is a load of bollocks, but City are doing their best to not get bent over a barrel and overpay for players. And it's not the first time we've walked away from a deal. Uh, Cucurella last year, Harry Kane the year before that, going all the way back to Alexis Sanchez. And how did all those players work out in the end? How did Cucurella work out? How did Harry Kane work out? Staying at Spurs, winning fuck all. Sanchez, how did that work out at United? There's Maguire, another one. We walked away from it. How do you... We are, are, are running this operation in such a professional manner, yet we're still tarnished with the brush of just cavalier with our spending and who cares what we spend money on. We don't care. Arsenal are outbidding Manchester City. The team that has infinite money is pulled out of the deal, yet the team that is such a well-run club, we are a traditional club, have gone and spent, or are about to spend £105 million, more than we've ever spent on a single player. We have never spent £105 million on a player, and they're about to do it. They've spent stupid money on Pepe, you know? So, who's spending what is starting to sound a little bit daft when you're bringing City into the conversation. But who do we replace or, or use as an alternative to Declan Rice. I do think Kovacic needs to come back and, and play into a deeper role, if that's the case, because the system, 
is it really would have suited Declan Rice. And whether it's still true or not, because it is only the Daily Mail, they're the only source so far that have said City have pulled out. Whether it's reliable enough, we'll have to wait and see. Whether City come in with a bid or not, we'll have to wait and see. But the rumours are, are, are strong and spreading like wildfire at the minute that City have pulled out of the deal. And that is pretty bad news for City in the sense that I wanted Declan Rice. I really thought he would fit the bill. Rodri and Rice in that that system that Pep ended the season with and spent the whole season with pretty much. And I spent I think fans spent the first half of the season trying to figure out what the inverted fullback role is actually going to be with Rico Lewis tucking in a lot of the time. Um, and it really wasn't an inverted fullback in the end. Because of how much we have the ball, we dominate so much of possession that we end up with two defensive midfielders more often than one defensive midfielder hybrid that had to drop back. Obviously, we did lose the ball every now and again, and, and it was stones in the in the final 10, 15 games of the season, and what a job he did. So with that in mind and how well John Stones did, I'm not too bothered that we need to go out and spend an, uh, $100 million on a player that can do that role, knowing John Stones can do it as well as he did. The issue for me is fatigue and injuries. John Stones in particular, and the fact that we ran Rodri ragged last season. We scraped every single possible second on the pitch out of Rodri as possible last season, and it's inevitable to see him get an injury or pick up a niggle at some point of the season. Next season, if we do that again and rely on him so heavily, and John Stones can definitely do that role. Kovacic, I think, can drop, drop into that role. We've got Rico Lewis, um, whether we go out and get Valverde, Kimmich, I don't think City will enter into business with Bayern Munich because there's a little bit of bad bad blood there. Historically, going off the, the Der Spiegler publications that came out of Germany and that was uh, Bayern Munich had their fingerprints all over that as far as I'm concerned. There was a little bit of bad blood there and accusations about financial fair play. They all seem to come out of Germany and the Bayern Munich people were heavily involved in that. So I'm not convinced we want to go back in to business with Bayern Munich. Romeo Lavia from Southampton, getting him back. That is, for me, probably the most sensible deal If we, because you don't think we'd have to break the bank. I think we've got first reserve on him. I think it's a £15 million buyback clause, which is a bargain. Now, I think it's £15 million. If it's, if it's not, it's not much more than that. So that that's saving money. We've got money we can spend elsewhere. Are you going to ask Phil Foden to drop into that midfield? People are talking about him being good enough to fill Declan Rice's boots as an alternative to not getting Declan Rice, that doesn't make sense to me because Declan Rice was definitely going to play alongside Rodri. And Foden can't play alongside Rodri. You don't want to be asking Foden to be doing that defensive midfield. I'm sure he could do an okay job, but you've got to drop into defence at some point. That's part of the role. You've got to drop into defence. So you're asking... Phil Foden to drop into left back or left centre back or right centre back or bollocks. That's never going to happen. Kovacic, on the other hand, I think he could do it. Stones definitely can do it. And for me, I think he could be the one. Um, but it is disappointing. It really is disappointing. Barella is another one that City fans and uh, rumours are going round about. Barella, the, again, he's an attacking midfielder. Same ball park as Foden. You won't be expecting Barella to play in defensive midfield alongside Rodri and dropping into defence as well. That's not going to happen. Not in a million years is that going to happen. I do think Kovacic can do it, dropping in to that role. But it is ultimately a, a, a disappointing news if, it's, if, if it proves to be true. City pulling out of the Declan Rice deal. I really thought we would go to and match Arsenal. I mean... If, if they're doing it in it's spread over a period of four or five years, so the 105 million is not up front, spread over four or five years of incremental uh, instalments, I'm not sure why we don't do the same thing. Why don't we spread our payments over a large period of time instead of going in with such a large sum up front with small add-ons? I, I, play Arsenal's game, play the cheap game, play play the, the steady Eddie game and spread it over a period of time. I still think we should be going for Declan Rice, I really do. I know some City fans will think that's great news, but I personally don't. But in other slightly more funnier news is United blow City out of the water in the net spend department. The net spend department that we are supposedly... King of the castle. We are apparently the one team that spends more than everybody. Well, we recoup our money 
because City have a net spend of 478 million since Guardiola's arrival, and that is compared to United's net spend of 800, 835 million, nearly double our net spend in the course of that five five year spell, six year spell now of Pep Guardiola's arrival. They've nearly doubled what we spent net spend on transfer fees, which, what have they got to show for it? A League Cup. Congratulations. It is cringe. It really is cringe. And it makes it doubly worse by the fact that they continuously point the finger at City as the worst spenders in football of this cavalier attitude towards the transfer market, which is so far from the truth. And yet their, their figures are black and white, clear as day, you've spent nearly double what we have. And there they are with their brigade of protesters outside the mega store in the United mega stores. Like, you, you will not, glaze us out, glaze us out and you will not buy a shirt from Manchester United. Because they're geniuses, these Manchester United protesters. Because obviously they've never heard of the internet. Because that is a, a very clever device where you get your mouse and you click on uh, on the shirt that you want and you drop it in your basket and then you click buy and then it arrives at your house. It's amazing. Have you ever heard of the internet, Man United fans? Because you putting a little protest outside one of the many mega stores that United have got across the world is putting the smallest dent in the Glazers' armour. They're pissing themselves. They're watching you thinking, are you really thinking that's going to do serious damage to our revenue? What is the message you're trying to send? You're sending a message that you're pissed off. Get that. But you're doing no damage. It is embarrassing. And it, it, even though today's news is bad, if, if City do pull out of the De Declan Rice deal... At least we're not united. That's all you have to think about things. You can always put things in perspective when you just look at those rags across the road. And it makes everything feel better. Because we're the treble winners. The most recent treble winners. In a treble that was much harder to win at the end of the day. And regardless of Declan Rice or not, I still think we're going to be winning trophies next year. Declan Rice going to Arsenal is puts them back in title challenges. Because I think... With Xhaka, the issues with Xhaka at Arsenal and the fact that I think they burnt out last season, that was them peaking. I don't think they're going to be challenging top, f they're struggling for top four. I don't think they'll be challenging for the title, particularly because there are going to be other teams in the way that are definitely going to improve. I think United will spend money and improve Ten Hag uh, uh, under Ten Hag. I think Chelsea under Pochettino will start spending money a little bit more smarter. Um, and Liverpool, I think they're going to be our number one challengers because the flurry, the, the the results that they picked up at the end of the season, the the first the damage was done in the first half of the season for Liverpool, but I don't think they're going to get off to a start like they did last season. So there are teams in the way of Arsenal, and we're the benchmark, we're the team that you need to catch right now. And uh, Declan Rice will make a good uh, headway into getting Arsenal into a, a position where they can challenge City again next season, but I still don't think they will. I think the, the Declan Rice deal does make it more difficult for City to fend them off, but um, hopefully we can go in with another bid. But what do we do, Blues? What do you think? Who do you think we should go for as an alternative to Declan Rice? This is typical City now. Holding up silver. 